I hope everyone's doing good this morning. Would you stand with me as we start our service? Your way. 
seated. Good morning. Great to see you and glad that uh, you are here. And if you're visiting with us today, uh, we're certainly glad to have you. And if you haven't filled out a connection card before, uh, there's one there in the seat in front of you and uh, you can fill that out. We're not going to harass you or we're not going to come visit you for three hours, uh, but we will uh, pray for you. And uh, we do have a gift that we will send to you. So uh, please fill that out. Uh, also, uh, if you have a prayer request, um, if you would note that on the connection card, and uh, we will pray. And there is a group of people uh, who pray uh, every single day uh, for the names, the list that is turned in. So I uh, keep that in mind. Uh, then a couple um, other announcement. Um, CIA, our faith kids, they are not going to meet April the 5th. That is spring break um, for Randolph County Schools, and uh, several of our leaders will be gone that week, and a good portion of our kids uh, will be away that week. So faith kids will not meet. And then faith kids uh, camp, I know I saw Stacy. there she is. Stacy Wilson. Is Amber in here? Amber moves around. That messes me up. Um, so the Mount Shepherd retreat is coming up. That is June the 2nd to the 4th. I think I said that right. It's that first weekend in June. So it's just Friday to Sunday. We have sent information home with all the kids um, on a flyer. I also have that information on the bulletin board in the ramp room as well as the QR code that you can just scan and it should take you straight to the link to sign your child up for Mount Shepherd. Um, this is for rising 4th, 5th, and 6th, or current 3rd, 4th, and 5th, however you want to look at it. Um, so um, I believe, I can't remember the exact date it's listed on there, but um, you can pay it all at once, or you can pay like 50% of it, I think, is due the second week in April, something like that. And I think all of it is due at the end of May, but the dates are listed on the bulletin board out here. Um, we also put it on the Facebook page. Um, there are, I th there's, I think, like three um, Facebook pages that are related to the church. Um, there's like a million Faith Baptist churches in the world. So um, we are Faith Baptist Trinity. And uh, when you go to look that up, then Faith Kids uh, has their page so that parents of that age bracket can stay informed. And then, of course, the youth, um, they have uh, theirs as well. So just keep that in mind. And then next Sunday is the... Next Sunday will be the Easter egg hunt. So it will take place at about 12.30. After church, we'll have some food. And then it'll start at 12.30. It'll give us time to hide the eggs after church. <laughs> Shouldn't be more than 30 minutes. Um, but it is next Sunday. So don't forget. So keep that in mind. Um, we, we're doing this specifically um, for our... Uh, church kids so they can have that experience if uh, if you have friends who want to come it's okay okay we're not like hiding it or anything but it's like um, somebody has said are you not gonna you know put it on the sign and get a spot on Fox 8 and all that um, no we're not um, and it's not that we don't want them to come but manpower um, we can't have 500 kids here and based on our normal numbers on Wednesday night that's a possibility we do things like that, the uh, truck retreat and all that. We, we put out there for the whole world. But we're going to feed your kids um, next Sunday after church. Parents, you're welcome to stay. You're welcome to run. You don't have time for ponchos, but if you want to run to the drive to McDonald's and come back and have a little McDonald's date, uh, you feel free to do that. But please, in the name of all that's holy, come back and get your kids at about 1245. Okay? Uh, so, so just keep that in mind. We'll give you a little bit of break uh, next Sunday afternoon. Uh, egg hunt. So plan, parents, to have your kids uh, here. Then um, Easter Sunday coming up in actually, I think, two weeks. Um, plan to be here. Uh, it is the Super Bowl of the Christian faith. Okay, so um, make sure that you are here. Uh, we're also going to be baptizing that Sunday morning. Uh, we have several people who have placed their faith in Christ recently, and uh, they're going to make that public. Um, as far as seating, it's also a great time to invite people. 
if you get them here, we're going to find them a seat. We have a plan. We're going to open up these rooms. Uh, we can put seating over there, and we'll have, um, if we have to, uh, we can do video streaming if that becomes uh, a need. But please don't pay. Some people will say, well, I've stopped inviting because we're so full. That's the dumbest thing in the world, okay? Um, husbands and wives, y'all can go back to sitting on each other's lap like you did when you were 15 if you need to. All right, so we're going to make it work. Uh, it's okay. Um, but please don't say, oh, we're too full. I'm not going to invite. Um, but make sure it's a great time. They now say that people are more apt to come Easter Sunday than they are Christmas Sunday. Um, so please keep that in mind. It's a great outreach tool. And it's all been provided for us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let's make sure that we avail ourselves of that opportunity. Then one other thing, um, regards to uh, giving. I know this time of year there are several things going on. Uh, the Annie Armstrong missions, you've got kids going to camp, and uh, regular giving. If you would, for those of you who give on Push Pay, if you have that app, you can scroll down and you can designate different areas. So instead of writing five things in one memo line, it would help with the bookkeeping if you would go and do uh, an additional line, okay? They're not going to charge you for it. It doesn't cost anything, but it helps with the bookkeeping if on push pay you do two or three different transactions versus one. The same thing is true when you're writing a check. Um, if you write a check and you're paying for your kid to go to camp and you're paying for your child to go to Mount Shepherd camp, you're giving the building fund. If you would not, these are all different accounts. Uh, we keep it all separate. That money, youth money has to go to Caswell. Mount Shepherd money has to go uh, in the Mount Shepherd account, building fund, et cetera. So if you would, uh, if you are a, a check writer, make it three different or two different checks. It helps with the bookkeeping uh, to get that in the appropriate account quickly. It will also ensure that your check gets cashed quickly. You can check it off. You OCD people like me, I want that check back instantly so I can know that it's been taken care of. It'll help with all that. Uh, so please keep that in mind. If you have any questions regarding um, your account money, Jamie Hudson takes care of that, and she's at the back row. Um, so you can ask her uh, any questions about that. All right, then one other thing, ladies meeting, Casey has 30 seconds. All right, we are so excited to say that when I left here last Sunday, we had collected 209 candy bars. So thank you so much from the bottom of our heart. Not only will we be able to bless the kids at both Trinity Middle School and Weaver Middle School, we will also bless the teachers. We are going to make them a goodie bag also. Um, and we did finish collecting today, which will tally up enough for us to bless the teachers. Next Sunday night, next Sunday night is ladies meeting. It begins at 6 o'clock. It is finger food. Next Sunday night is a very special night. I will not be here. So, you are going to have the lovely Jessie Davidson is going to be bringing the lesson. And she and I have known each other a long time. She has a heart after God. It's going to be an awesome lesson. And then, you're going to put together the goodie bags for the kids at the middle school. So, we do need a good turnout. Um, to be many hands make light work, and it also makes it happen quick. So if you will still come next Sunday night at 6 o'clock, you're going to have a great time. The goodie bags are going to be made. You're going to pray over the goodie bags. It's going to be a great, great night. So enjoy, and um, y'all pray for us as we travel. All right. That's a lot, right? Make sure you have you made notes, follow through. Uh, and help out again thanks to all the help one other thing and this will be the last thing I promise on announcements but children's church uh, and nursery we are still short uh, some people and uh, we need to get this covered so if you were willing to help you want to be trained what do I do if I volunteer to sign up for children's church or nursery what is that going to entail if you will put on your connection card I'm willing to at least hear or learn about how I could help um, Stacy will get with you and she will pair you with someone. You can have several times of training to learn how to do that. Anything else on that, Stacy? Nursery's actually good. We got nursery's everybody. good. Everybody volunteered for nursery last week. So if anybody okay. wants children's church, we still got some spots for you. Just let me know. <laughs> I can imagine to change a diaper over having a, a little kid. <laughs>
we're not even talking about middle school. This is middle school. These are the little ones. I mean, you can knock them in the fanny and they'll sit down, all right? So it's not like, not really, please. That's not your training. That's not the training, okay? Um, we're, I'm going to defer to Stacy, and uh, she's uh, more PC than I am, and uh, she will make sure you know the right thing to handle that. But if you could help out with that, that would be great. All right, uh, who's had a great week? Who had a bad week? Who had just, ah, it's okay. All right. Today, um, it's so easy to focus on a super great week or a super bad week, and I know that. But today, um, here's what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to forget about this past week. I'm not going to be anxious about the week to come. I'm going to focus on my God who loves me, and he has a plan in all things, and he has promised, he's promised this, we can count on this, that when we gather in his name, that he's going to be here. If it's just me and one person, he's going to be here. If it's 200 plus, he's going to be here. So today, of all the things that we have to pray about, and we have loads of needs in our church, and they've been prayed for this morning already, and they'll be prayed for every single day this upcoming week. But right now, let's let our prayer be, God, more than anything, more than a winning lottery ticket, more than healing, more than any material thing I can think of, God, what I need is to be with you. So today, as we collectively pray, we're going to ask God, God, you speak to my heart what I need to hear from you. And God, help me to be open to what you want to say to me. And God, help me to worship you in a way that I never have before so that I can experience the fullness of what Christ paid for on the cross. God, today, we, um, we gather here and God, there are people here because they were invited. God, there are people here because it's the Sunday thing to do. God, there are people here who, this is what we were raised to do. On Sunday morning, you go to church. God, there are people here who are just here because they're curious. God, there are people here from every walk of life. We have mature Christians, new Christians, and some who are not Christ followers at all. And so, God, but what we all need, the one thing, the common denominator of every single person in here is, God, we need a touch from a holy God. God, we need to experience you afresh. God, there are hearts that need revived. There are hearts that need to be saved. God, there are hearts, cold hearts, that need to be lit afire again. And so, God, today, what would help and what is the cure for all of that, God, is time with you. So, God, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would help us, God, to focus on nothing but the person of Jesus Christ. God, if we doubt or question your love or the plan that you have for us, God, I pray that you would help the cross of Christ to become real to us. And God, we would see afresh of what you really did on that cross. So God, today, for those who've had a tough week, God, certainly I pray the next week would be better. And God, I pray that whatever the issue is, God, I pray that you would help that to work out and give wisdom and guidance. And God, most of all, help us see Jesus for who he really is. And God, we pray all this in that name that is above every name. God, that name in which every knee will bow at some point. God, it's his name. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Shit. 
Stand up at this time. And then all of the kids fourth grade and below, you're going to go through those double doors. And uh, then parents, that's where you will pick them up uh, following worship today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank all the leaders and parents for yesterday. We took the kids back to the 80s and went roller skating, and it was awesome. We had a great time. So thank you to the parents and leaders who came um, uh, for skating and Chick-fil-A yesterday. Uh, this Wednesday, we are at Father's Storehouse. That's a little different. Normally, we go on the first Wednesday of the month, but Father's Storehouse has asked us to specifically come out uh, the 29th, so you we will be at Father's Storehouse uh, this Wednesday night um, at 6.30. Well, parents, I want to, sometimes I like to give you a glimpse of what we do at you. So for the past, you know, winter months, we've been at Trindale, and we've been doing this thing called the circle, where we just circle up in the middle of the floor. Uh, I've given out youth, I've given out note cards, and said, hey, listen, while we're going through the lesson, if there's some Christian or something that you want us to help answer biblically, please write it down. So I'm going to give you a few examples of what we do at youth. Here is the first one. Why do people try to fit in when they're born to stand out? Remember, these are all questions the youth are asking. Dave, I am good in spirit in the Lord, so why is my mental health still not doing well to the point I have more bad days than good days. I know I need to keep moving and to not give up, but I want to give up. I'm scared. Dave, why do women say one thing but mean another? <laughs> it's right here, parents, if you want to see it. I didn't write it. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. From a, from a, uh, <laughs> 
We'll talk after church. Okay, good, good. Okay. Here's another one. Remember, this is all from our awesome youth. Sixth grade to senior. Why do people do drugs and vape and drink? Why is my brother so bipolar? Okay. Dave, why do me and my mom, why do we butt heads constantly? Hmm. It brings me down. How do I handle it? This is a question we actually answered um, this past Wednesday night. Um, let's see. Why do people try to be something that they're not? And then lastly, what should you do if one of your friends is self-harming themselves, but you want to help? Guys, these are questions we answer at youth, all right? And hopefully you answer them at home first, and then we answer them at youth. The thing that we see with youth is if they're not asking them at home and they're not asking them at youth, they're going to ask them to their friends, and they're going to find the world. So please get your, get your youth to youth. Get your youth to you so we can empower them biblically to stand up to this world. And this is just a, an example of the 50 to 70 cards I have over there. So that leads me into four or five. Although Children's Church is not meeting on that Wednesday night, we are meeting here. We are back at the church. Our youth will be back here on four or five to dive into more lessons like this. And how, they can, and how we can empower them to go out into this world and to be a stronghold for Christ. And that's why I brought this young lady up. All right, this is Miss Mackenzie Webb. She is one of the leaders at Prayer at the Pole on every Wednesday at her school, Wheatmore Middle. And so I'm going to have her pray over our offering. Youth, if you would please come up for our offering today. If you would, please bow your heads. Ms. Webb. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us all gather here today and worship and praise you. And I pray today that as we listen to Pastor Mickey's sermon, that it just touches each and every one of our hearts. And I pray that anyone who is hurt or sick, that you can just heal them. And I pray that you help us have a good rest of our day and a good rest of our week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, this next song is probably new to most of you, uh, but it's, uh, it's called I Am Not Good. It's about being lost in sin, coming to the free gift of salvation, and then still not being worthy um, to be with Christ and acknowledging that. chose to rescue me, put up a fight when I don't know what's right or if I even belong in this world. I've been longing for more. I'm unsure that this mercy is mine. I've only wasted my time, yet you took what was mine. Still you sustain and remain by my beating heart You are still good, you're always worthy You stay the same while you gently restore me My heart you have turned into white Covered in crimson and led by your light that is burning so bright within me. You have freed the guilty. You were laid to rest, conquered death, and guaranteed victory. You traded your life to give mercy to mine. And through this sacrifice, I still find I am not. 
not good. I am not worthy. I'm undeserving of your hands to mold me. I've come undone, except that you hold me. The path that you've given me is like your preserving. You know that you are. I fall from the mark, but still you sustain and remain by my Let's pray. God, today, uh, we do not need to hear from another human. God, our world is full of human wisdom and the opinions of, of men and women. And, and God, today, we pray uh, that you would help us to ultimately hear from you. And God, unworthy is an understatement, but God, I pray that you would use these words, use your word uh, in these notes to point people to the person of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. For one thing, uh, most of you probably this past week, if there's one thing uh, you did, was you hurried somewhere in a rush. Um, people seemingly are always running late somewhere, um, and uh, everybody is in a hurry to get somewhere except the cemetery, right? Right. Uh, the ambulance goes fast, the hearse goes slow, right? And uh, so people hurry, hurry. When we read scripture, it's like um, there's a lot of talk of get away, come and rest. The Bible talks of that Sabbath rest where you slow down uh, and experience the rest that uh, Jesus uh, wants to give. Very, very few places in scripture are God's people told uh, to hurry? Uh, hurry to salvation because the day is the day of salvation. Uh, most of the time, Jesus, um, it's not like that he was in so much a rush, but we frequently read of him getting away to do the opposite of hurry, but to slow down and spend time with the Father. Physical rest, but of course also spiritual rest. There's one very familiar uh, story in Scripture where Jesus tells this guy to hurry up, to hurry and come down. We're going to pick this up in Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 19. Luke, chapter 19. Luke 19. The Bible says that then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was what? Rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, 
but could not because of the crowd, for he was short. Verse 4 says, So he ran ahead and climbed up into a, a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste or hurry up and come down. For today I must stay at your house. So he made haste or hurried and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He, Jesus, has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. In this culture, you know from Sunday school that tax collectors were the most horrible people. Um, and I still feel the same way today, right? I mean, it's not like what has really changed, but they were bad then uh, as well. We don't know what happened between verse 7 and 8. Um, commentators, study Bibles, speculate, but the truth is we don't know. But we do know what happened in verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Lord, I give half of all my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I'll restore it fourfold or 400%. And Jesus said to him, today salvation or today eternal life, today your being right with God has happened today because he is also a son of Abraham. And for the Jews to hear this, for the Jews to hear that this tax collector, this criminal, this evil person, for Jesus to say, hey, he is a child of Abraham, which was to say he is a true child of God in every way, would have been very offensive to the Jewish people because they thought they were, of course, better than tax collectors for sure. But Jesus said... And whatever happened between verse 7 and 8, all is right. He is right with God. He is a true Jew. He is a true child of Abraham. And he is as sure of heaven as if he were already there. Here you have a grown man climbing a tree on Main Street, Jericho. This man is climbing a tree to see another man that he has obviously never had a conversation with before. This is weird. I don't care how you look at it. Bible story or not. When you go down Main Street in High Point and you see a man climbing up in a tree, nobody says, oh, I bet he's a neurosurgeon at High Point Regional Hospital, right? I mean, nobody says that, okay? Uh, it is strange. We wonder he was, he was short. Are all short people strange? Of course not, right? Uh, of course not. But you got this weird thing going on. Jesus would have found, and if Jesus had determined that he was going to have a relationship with Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus didn't have to climb the tree. Uh, Jesus didn't see Zacchaeus because he climbed the tree. Jesus saw Zacchaeus because they, he had an appointment with God, and, Z and Jesus was seeking lost people people who didn't have a relationship with him as he is doing even today. So they make this connection. What blows my mind, Jesus, who is never seemingly in a hurry, he is never in a hurry to answer my prayers. Is he yours? Let's be honest. No. I mean, he is slow as he can be sometimes, right? Uh, and all of a sudden, he tells this nut in a tree, who is a tax collector, who is hated by everybody, he says, hey, buddy, I want you to come down and do it as fast as you can. Fast as you can, I want you to come down from that tree because not only are, am I going to talk with you, but right now I'm going to your house and we're going to hurry. What is the rush? Why does it matter? If he, if he hurries or not. The reality is Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, wanted to know more about him, but Jesus was in a huge hurry to make the connection for Jesus to go into Zacchaeus's world and have a relationship with him. Zacchaeus had no time to get the Clorox out. There was no time to run the vacuum. There was no time to have the kids sent off somewhere, especially if they were middle schoolers, right? He had no time to do all that. It's like right now, Jesus says, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to come into your world. 
Today, there are loads and scores of people who want a relationship with God. I do not believe this common thing that's being taught and preached that, that people want nothing to do with God. I, I don't think that's true. I think deep down in the pit of every single human being's soul in their heart, there is a desire put there by holy God that says there is something more to life. That you need a relationship with God. Romans 1 makes that very clear. That we all have that desire to have a connection with God. The problem is we do all kinds of things to have that relationship. There are some people who climb trees. There are some people who hug trees. There are some people who do drugs. There are some people who have all these kinds of addictions. Because they are trying to feel a void in their heart. A void in their life. That scripture says only God can fill. So every single atheist, every single evil person you know on death row or your next door neighbor, they have a desire for a relationship with God. The problem is when you have that desire, you have to do something with it. You either come down from the tree or you stay in the tree. Some people have the desire, but they say, you know what? I'm going to stay in the tree because the way I think and looking at God from a distance are not having that personal connection. I don't want that because if I have that, it means I have to do something with it. Fast forward to the people who have placed their faith in Christ. There are loads of people, not y'all, but the people here last week will say, who come to church and they want a wave relationship with Jesus. Going down the road, if I see somebody wave at me, I typically, if I see you, I just wave back. In case you are a church person, okay? Um, in case I do know you. Do I look to figure out who you are every time? No way, because I'm always in a, I'm always in a hurry, right? But I, I look and see. So I, I wave at, at these people. But I, I keep going, okay? There are people, there are Christians who, who want a wave relationship with Jesus. Stand in the tree, sit in the tree, and just hope that he passes by. Did Zacchaeus have any clue he was going to Jesus' house that day? No way. He was just trying to get a glimpse. And Jesus said, buddy, Zach, come on down. Zach had a choice, okay, am I going to go down? Or stay in the tree? Am I going to have this parade on look relationship with Jesus? Or am I going to have a real genuine relationship with Jesus? There is a difference between the two. Come here, puck it. Your mama told me to do this, okay? So it's just like, you know. I know, Jonathan, that truck he drives, is it ever fixed? That green truck? Got a red bumper. I can spot Jonathan's truck half a mile away. It's green, it's low to the ground, has a red bumper. He has this yellow hair. I mean, it's just like, okay, I can spot him anywhere. There are times where I will see Jonathan and I will blow the horn, all right? And I will wait. Sometimes Jonathan weighs back. Sometimes he acts like he doesn't know me, right? Depending on how, how I do it. And uh, so, but we have that, okay? Jonathan and I can spend the rest of our lives, when I see him, I know him in the green truck. That is the Casey Puckett's kid. No, I'm that way. Huh? Are you? Oh, you are. Oh, okay, good. Let's see there. All right. So Casey and Philip, this is their kid. All right. I can see him. I can wait. We can spend the rest of our life. I will always know who he is. And if he's honest, he will always know who I am. And, and we have a choice. I can never take him for lunch again. Never pay for his lunch. I can say I'm never going to do anything for him. I have that choice. And I can say, hey, Jonathan, I'm going to take you to Poncho's today. For, I'm not, by the way, but I could say I could take you to I could take you to lunch at Poncho's. And Jonathan could say, yes, that would be cool. I would like that. Or he could say, no, I'm not. Again, I'm not taking it, but um, I'm just saying he has that choice. OK, look at yourself right now as a Christian, as a believer, as a person who has heard about God. Here's your option. Some of you have heard about God your whole life. And as far as it's ever gotten is, hey, God, 
Hey, God. There you are, God. Something bad is funny that the prayer life that people develop when something bad happens in their life just blows my mind. I mean, people can be cussing their brains out one minute, but let them get that one text and it's, oh, dear God, please. Right. We have seen that happen over. There are Christians who have placed their faith in Christ. OK, who say, you know what? I have a relationship with him and it started out like you're going to ponchos every single day for lunch. But suddenly it's drifted away. And now you have a wave relationship with God from up in a tree because there is no real connection. Zacchaeus, if you look at this story, it is so wild. The Bible is very clear, very descriptive. We know that he was short. And he was R.I. rich. He was short and he was rich. He has this little meal or coffee, one Starbucks, but he had some kind of meal with uh, Jesus there. They had tea or Coke or something. All of a sudden, he says this. I'm going to give back half of everything I have. It's going to go to the poor. And then he says this, everybody that I have taken advantage of, I'm going to give it back 400%. I'm going to, all I can do, I'm going to borrow money to make sure that I have made everything right. Now, Jesus says he's a true son of Abraham. Did Jesus say, Zach, you're a true son of Abraham because you're giving all of this back? Because you are repenting of all the wrong. Or did Jesus say you're a true child of Abraham because of what? Church, biblically, it had nothing to do with the fact that he gave everything back. Biblically, it had to do with the fact that Zach, Zacchaeus was a man who had faith. He had faith in who he was. Faith enough to let Jesus come into his world, his house, unannounced. And that changed everything. When you have a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ, it will change things. You will be different. You will be different on the inside and it will overflow to the outside. Now here's what's wild. So many times these encounters that we want with Jesus were all about him changing our circumstances. The reason hundreds of people get saved every single week in jails and prisons across this nation, the root of a lot of that is, I get saved, God will get me out of here. What happens? I've done jail ministry. I've watched this thing play out. Okay? It, it happens. They want Jesus to change their circumstances. We have had people who have, they have marriage trouble. One of them will get saved. They'll get saved. We'll wet them. And they think that's going to fix everything. We actually have had parents who have middle school kids who think, hey, we get saved, start coming to church. Man, they'll all of a sudden become mini Billy Grahams, right? It doesn't happen. Zacchaeus, he's still short. He's still, his career is still collecting taxes at this point. That's his job. And he is still hated by the masses. The Jews still hate him. They are upset with Jesus because he's having a meal with him. So he is still hated. He's still riding around on a donkey collecting taxes. Seems like there's another political group that their logo is a donkey and they like taxes. I can't remember who it is, but anyway, y'all figure it out. All right. So it's like, that's his world. That's what's going on. He's still hated. They're still mad. That he is now being called a child of Abraham because of what the encounter he's had with Jesus and because they consider him an evil man. I'm all for people becoming Christ followers. But it's not that he's going to change your circumstances, but he's going to change you in your circumstances. That's what happened to Zacchaeus. Now, let's bring this to all of us, and I'm through. We're going to beat the Methodist to punch it today. The greatest need right now, not just among lost people, let's forget them for a minute. Let's talk about God's people. 
95% of you probably have a daily walk with Jesus. You're a Christ follower. You've been dunked. You've been prayed for. You pray for other people. That the greatest need, and people said, a preacher asked me too, what is one to pray for him? Our, our guy, Michael Bear, he's going to be, he'll be here in a couple of weeks, our associational missionary. He said, Mickey, what is the greatest need of your church that I can pray for you? And I have a group of people who are going to pray for all the churches. What's yours? And man, I can't a list. We need a building. We need people to stop robbing God and be faithful in their giving. We need people to do children's church. We need people to do nursery. We need faith kids people. We need somebody to pay to have the parking lot repaid. We need a house. I mean, I'm talking about 30, 40 times. I almost hit sin on the email. Here's some wisdom for you. Before you ever hit send on an email or a text, read through it one more time, right? That would be some good wisdom for you. Read through it one more time. I thought, no. What I think we really need more than anything is to learn how to get in the presence of God and live there. And live there. You see, I'm concerned that we have, the devil cannot ruin the church. Jesus said the gates of hell cannot come against the church. There's going to always be a Christian church somewhere in the world until the rapture takes place. I can promise you that. Don't get discouraged about a church closing down. It may happen, but hear me good. There's going to always be a bride for him to come back to. Okay? Always going to, that's going to happen. Because it's going to be believers. But my concern is we've got a lot of Christians committing spiritual suicide and churches committing spiritual suicide because they have forgotten how to get in the presence of God. And I'm going to tell you what is needed more. And I'm all for good Christian books. Listen, read yourself a good Christian book by a sound biblical author. Do that. Get yourself in a good Bible study. Get yourself in a good prayer group. Get yourself some good... Christian friends and believers do all of these things. But what you need more than anything is to come down out of your tree of pride and out of your tree of self-sufficiency and out of your tree, I can do anything and all that. No, no, no. Leave all that in the tree. You come down and say, you know what, Jesus? I just, I need you to just come in my house. God, just... On the way down Main Street, back to my house, let's just talk about life. Let me just tell you what it's like to be hated by everybody in town. Let me tell you what it's like to be known as the, the, the tax collector, the donkey man, the, the, uh, the other person, right? Let me just tell you what that's like. And then when you get to my house, there's no time to clean up. Zacchaeus is why there's probably dishes. I don't know. Maybe the house hadn't been vacuumed in weeks, but just... I think he chilled out from the tree to the house. And then when they got in the house, we have no clue what they talked about. I think they talked about life. I think Zacchaeus says, little Zach Jr. is about to drive me nuts. He's going to be in the seventh grade for the next hundred years, I feel like. It's like, what about that, Jesus? We have all this money. We have lake houses and beach houses and mountain houses. And we have eight, 18 donkeys and every kind of brand you can think of. But Jesus, I climbed the tree. I'm sure, Jesus. Jesus, it's a little weird now that I think about it, that I am down Main Street climbing a tree in a parade to see another man. That's weird, Jesus. We think about that. I think Jesus listened to the whole story. I think he heard the self-issues, the, the complex that he had because he was four feet tall. I don't know. We don't know what they talked about. But we know culturally, Jesus was probably there a couple hours based on what we know about history at that time. In the course of that time, Zacchaeus was in the presence of the Messiah. The Son of God and the flesh right there in his living room. And Zacchaeus comes out of this, this meal 
This teed is coffee. And he's a changed man. He's still short. He doesn't have a new career yet. He's still hated by every single person in town. But he walks out his front door and he's breathing and he's looking at life a whole different way. And today, here's what will help you have a good mood. Here's here it is. You get in the presence of God and say, God, I am so anxious. Will you, will you come into my world and help me deal with that? God, I need healing. God, will you, will you just come into my world and God, maybe, maybe you're not going to heal me and maybe it's never going to get any better, but God, will you just come and live in my house so that I can be with you and get through this with you? And, and God, I, I don't know what to do with my kids. God is, God is, maybe it's not for you. Take the wheel, but you just take my kids. I don't know. It's like, God, please, I just need some, just need some, I need some help. And here's what I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, oh, you do that and, and tomorrow you'll wake up and everything will be right. No, no, no. Zacchaeus' circumstances weren't changed, but Zacchaeus was. His life was changed. His world was, was changed. His outlook was changed all because he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. You're in a hurry to do something. Right now, some of you are like, oh, yes, we're going to beat the crowd. We're going to rush out of here. You'll be on two wheels going out of the parking lot to beat the crowd. You know, you're, you're in a hurry. So be it. What would happen if you got in a hurry to be with the Son of God? What would happen if you, like Zacchaeus, would got in a hurry? You know what, Jesus, I need some time with you. And Jesus today is saying, hurry. Hurry up. You don't have to live that way. You don't have to have a life without me. You don't have to have a life where there's constant anxiety and constant stress and constant all this irritation. You don't have to live that way. Jesus said, hurry up. Hurry up. Come down. And let me go with you into your work, your house, your school, your job, your relationship, your people. That's what's needed. Of all the things we have to pray about. And of all the things you might need. The one thing God would say to you, David. Hurry up. And get in my presence. David Jane had no clue what I was going to preach. But he's going to come and sing that song like a ballad. Run to the Father. And it's just going to be him. The band. Y'all can y'all have to come. But um, I thought. Oh my gosh. That's what he was saying. Just run to the Father. Hurry. Make haste. Come quickly. Because you don't have to live that way. I'm going to come to your world. So today, ask yourself this. How long has it been since you heard God say to you, if you're going to hurry to do anything, hurry to me. Hurry to me. Hurry to me. Run. Run. Get in my presence. Let me come into your house. Let me be there with you. In the morning when things are hectic, let me be there with you. In the middle of the day when you're wondering what's going to happen next, let me be there with you. When you, there's all of these hundreds and thousands of issues that go through our mind, he says, just hurry and get in my presence. I think once Jesus got there, I don't think Zacchaeus was in a hurry to go to bed. I don't think he was in a hurry to watch Netflix. I don't think he was in a hurry to think about, okay, what can, which catalog can I look up? Which website can I go to next to buy something else? I think, scripturally, in his presence, he just breathed the very breath of God. He said, what I need is just to be in the presence. So today, maybe you just need to be in his presence. You know what he's saying? Hurry. Hurry and get there. Hurry and come to me. If you've never placed your faith in Christ, he's saying, hurry, hurry up. Do it now. Let me make you a child of God just like I did for Zacchaeus. Based on your faith, not the tree climbing, not the, just come be in my presence. Would you stand, God, today? God, we hurry to everything. We rush to everything. And God, today, May we hurry to your presence. May we rush to get to your presence. And God, once we get there, God, help us to, to be there, to rest there, to stay there, to live 
there. God, in our culture, we are we always running and rushing. But God, today, I pray that the one place we would run, the one place we would rush, would be in, to be in the presence of God. And today... Ask him. Say, God, I just come to my house, God. I just I just need you to be with me. God, I need you in my world. God, I need you in my life. I need to do life with you first. Jesus. And today, if you don't know him, you've never placed your faith, you've never become a Christ follower. Today he's saying, Hurry up. Just just come, just try it. Just let me come into your world. And if you don't like it, tell me to leave. But nobody ever does that really once they've experienced it. So today, if you've never had that encounter with God, he would say, hurry up. I love you. I want this for you. Today, you pray. Just get his presence. God, hurry up. God, I just want, I just want to get there. God, I just need you. Altar is open if you need to come pray. If you've never placed your faith in Christ, we'll show you how. But just get in his presence. God, we pray that you would help us to do that. God, help us to get there. God, help us to let you in every aspect of our world, the whole house, the closets, under the sinks. God, help us to allow you in every place. God, because where you're at, where your presence is, there is peace. There is hope. There is joy. There is the calmness of spirit in that place. God, help us to to get there. I'm done with 
with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend. So I run to the Father again. God, today, God, for those who have chosen and acknowledged and been honest and said, God, I need to be in your presence. God, I need, I need you in my house. God, I need you at school and I need you at work and God, I need you in the car and God, I pray that as we live our lives in this fallen world. God, when there's so much evil and heartache and pain and trouble, God, I pray that God, we would do it in your presence. God, you never promised that we wouldn't go through it. But God, you did promise that you would never leave us. God, that you would never forsake us. God, that you would be that friend that sticks closer than a brother. God, that when we see no way, that God, you would make a way. And God, I pray today that the time in your presence would not be a few moments at the end of a church service or worship service. But God, that doing life in your presence, God, you're still with us when we walk through those doors. And God, when we get in the car, God, God you're there. God, when we go to lunch, God, God, you're there. God, when we go home and take a nap, or God, you're there. God, when we wake up tomorrow and only you know what we're going to face, God, you're there. So God, I pray that through your Holy Spirit, you would help us, God, to be mindful of the fact that you are there. God, that you have chosen to come to our house. God, you've chosen to Make the choice through the cross to do life with us. And God, I pray we'd let you. God, I pray that any time we feel like we're kind of away from that or wandering away, God, that we would just hurry up and get back to that place where we know you're real, where we know that you're speaking to us, where we know that you're guiding us. God, that will only happen the help of your spirit. So God, today I pray that you would help us to be sensitive. God, help us to acknowledge when your Holy Spirit speaks and you draw us and convict us. God, help us to hear that and heed that, we pray. In Christ's name, amen.